Okay. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. I am Wen Bin. Uh, Wen Bin Guo. So I'm a, a bioinformatics uh, PhD student. Now uh, this is a good time to teach a QC Bio workshop focus on the Unix command line and shells programming. So uh, a little bit about me is that I'm a fourth year PhD student uh, in bioinformatics PhD program. So I came from the uh, computer science and the biological science program uh, uh, background when I was an undergraduate stu uh, student. And I, when I moved into the PhD program, I uh, learned some data science and the statistics, some machine learning stuff. So that's basically about me, like the, the background knowledge preparation. So I uh, use, I started to use the uh, Unix when I was like a second year student in the college. So that's about like uh, five, six years ago. So I have like five, six years experience with this Unix. And uh, I think it's a good time to teach this workshop, share some of my knowledge with you guys. And I currently work with uh, Dr. Matteo Pinigrini. So my research uh, topics uh, focus on the, the following uh, topics, like the DNA methylation in disease diagnosis and then in, the, uh, in the aging process. And I also have some uh, previous experience with QTL studies and uh, some cancer immunotherapy uh, uh, research experience. And uh, so, uh, so that's about the research academic side. And uh, for the non-academic side, I have a lot of hobbies like playing uh, what kinds of sports, uh, like basketball, badminton. I love uh, going skiing uh, in the mountains. So actually in the past winter, winter uh, holiday, um, I actually went to the mammals and go skiing there. And it's, uh, it's a good time, uh, it's, it's pleasant experience. I also like to go to the national parks, playing sports uh, games and uh, with, with my friends. So yeah, uh, a lot of uh, fun stuff here. And uh, so today we are going to learn uh, the Unix, uh, mainly about the Unix command line. And I believe you guys have received the email I sent you, sent to you last night uh, yesterday uh, about the preparation. So um, uh, if, if you haven't checked it, uh, it, it's okay. I will go over those things in day one. And for today's uh, learning, it's mainly about what is about the, the Unix and uh, how are we going to navigate through the Unix file system and then how to manipulate the files and directories. And uh, so uh, some of the, uh, the, the notations of the slides, uh, so if you notice uh, arrow uh, uh, here, like uh, echo, hello world, those uh, UNI means a code chunk. So you can just uh, copy and paste the code chunk into your terminal and then run it. And the link uh, UNI is uh, underlined, so you can just uh, click it, so it will open a, a web page for you. And uh, the 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 slides also have some uh, slides uh, with uh, this yellow man here. That means uh, it's a practice slide, so uh, you can uh, use it to practice your skills, uh, like uh, get gain some hands-on experience. And also for this workshop, where we know it's. Uh, uh, it's it's more like an example showing uh, workshop like uh, we will post from time to time so that you can practice those and then also uh, 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 get, uh, ask some questions in the chat box or something. So uh, this is about the preparation. Um, uh, I believe everyone here has a hotline to account, but if you haven't have one, so, uh, these slides will guide you to how to register one, request one, and then, uh, so this is a, a concrete example here. Uh, you just go to the Hoffman 2 website and uh, under the resources uh, section, you click the get a Hoffman 2 account, um, uh, just click this link, and then it will show you um, 
a web page about the documentation of Hopan 2. And then you uh, just click register here. So uh, after that, you will go into another web page called uh, GIM, uh, the Grid Identity Manager. Uh, so after that, you just uh, fill in your uh, information about, uh, about the, the username you want to use. Uh, the password and uh, also some of the some of your information and then if you don't have a sponsor uh, so probably you can choose uh, collaboratory workshops and uh, so this is uh, when you don't have a Hoffman 2 account at all you can just uh, follow this step to request the one and the uh, step two is to get your computer ready so when we want to learn the unix and then once you access Hoffman 2, we want some uh, terminal to do that. So if you are a Windows user, I recommend you to install this uh, mobile XTEM. And uh, uh, yeah, this is a free software and it's very uh, user friendly. So you can just uh, install it and uh, uh, click this start local terminal. So here you can like uh, have your first uh, ex experience with the terminal C. Okay, and uh, so if you want another option, you can also install the Windows Subsystem Linux, uh, short for WSL. So this is just, uh, uh, yeah, I also provide the official instruction for you uh, to, 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 to install this. And uh, so, for this workshop, we mainly focus on the mobile XTEM. And if you want to like make your life harder or something, you can just try other options. But here, uh, the WSL is actually a very good uh, integration of Linux into the Windows system. And uh, we can see that the basically running the uh, many, many things of Linux on, the, on a Windows machine. And also we have other options, like uh, you can also probably search the internet, find, find a lot of uh, command line tools like uh, CGWin, Gitbash, Xshell. So we are not going to go into them, but you are really welcome to try them yourself. But basically what we need is just a terminal. And if you are Mac OS or Linux user, uh, things will be just much easier because you can just uh, uh, from your from your uh, apps, just uh, open the terminal scene, and then you get a terminal. So it's much easier. And uh, so for the questions and the references, uh, we uh, so I I prepared a Google Doc for you guys, so you can just uh, click it, and then uh, uh, later I will show you maybe just uh, put your questions here. And then after each of the section, end of the section, we can go over those questions and answer them. And uh, this workshop is mainly about uh, this book. So basically it's, uh, this is a Bible book. So no, nobody is going to memorize a Bible, but you can always refer to it when you need it. So uh, this is actually free, freely available if you are on UCLA campus network. So yeah, we're really uh, welcome to download it and uh, then use it as a dictionary. And uh, whenever you forget something about the, the, the Unix things, you can go over it. So this is uh, freely available online, uh, which is, uh, I think is very useful for you, for you guys. So uh, maybe I can just uh, click this, uh, click this, um, this Google document. So basically you can, say, uh, uh, yeah, this is just, any, just a basic format for the questions. So you can just type in your uh, questions and then your link to, to the following, one, two, three, four. So at the end of the searching, I will uh, answer them. And also uh, another, the, the good thing is that you can, if you uh, fail, fail get into some trouble or something, uh, you can capture your, uh, your screen and then paste it here. So uh, in this way, if it helps to illustrate your problem, it probably will, uh, will be uh, easier for me to answer them. 
And uh, also another question, uh, another option is you can paste your questions on the chat room. So uh, if yeah, so so I can also uh, give give a, a quick answer to that. And uh, yeah, let's go back to the to the slides. I no I noticed a question in the chat chat room. Let me check. Uh, I took care of it. Okay, good. So uh, now let's get into the real contents of today's uh, talk, today's lecture. All right. Right, so um, this is a date day one, uh, a little bit about the format of this workshop. We are going to have a three hour workshop. So, but honestly, I don't think uh, I can keep talking for three hours and trust me, it will kill you. And uh, so this uh, workshop will be divided into these subsections that we are going to talk about 45 minutes and then we will have a 10 minute break. And during the break, you can have water you can go to the bathroom and uh, well, if you feel, feel sick about uh, like attending the, seeing me or hearing, hearing my voice, you can get a break, yeah. And then uh, at the end of the, 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 the workshop session, we will have a 30, yeah, the, the last one is a 30 minute and the following one is just like the practice and also the Q and A. And today's topic is about uh, Unix, Linux, and the command line interface. So we are going to talk about what's that and why do we name that? And then we will guide you to uh, log into the Hoffman 2, uh, uh, 2, 2 cluster. So I believe everyone here has a Hoffman 2 account from the roster I got yesterday. So I, we can uh, log into that uh, easily. And uh, so, uh, the third thing is about the file system and the file path of the Unix. So this is, I think it's vitally important um, for, 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 for us to learn because usually we work in those environment. We need to know where are we and where, where are we going and uh, what's there in the, in, 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 the, in the directory. And we're also going to learn some basic command lines today uh, for navigating through the system and uh, dealing with the files and directories. So what is Unix and Linux? So Unix is a family of uh, multitasking and multi-user computer operating systems. So it's developed in 1970s, actually in 1969 at AT&T Bell Labs. And uh, so, Actually, uh, if you imagine our modern world, you you have computers running different systems, you have cell phones running systems, and also you have like your iPad, iPhone, uh, what, what, what kind of things. So basically they are all have some kind of shadows uh, of, of Unix. And Linux is just an open source Unix-like system, although it didn't use any uh, Unix code but it's uh, developed in the Unix philosophy. And uh, as I said, uh, nowadays we, we live in this multimedia, uh, multi, multi, multimedia uh, period time. So almost everything we touch actually uh, have something uh, to do with the Unix Linux, like, uh, like our, our mobile devices. And also if you are a, a fan of the uh, Amazon, uh, Amazon Echo or, uh, or Google, Google Dot or uh, Apple Home. So probably you uh, get in touch with the Internet of Things, connect every de devices with, with, your, with your iPhone. So and also some uh, server like the Hoffman 2 and also other like the cloud computing we are using Google Clouds, Amazon Cloud. So basically the all have some uh, relations with the Linux things. Actually, a lot of the servers, they are running in the Linux. So here we are not really care about the difference between Unix and Linux. So we are going to just uh, use the Unix Linux as a, uh, in, interchangeably. 
so that uh, when we talk about the command line, uh, actually it can be run, uh, a lot of them are the same in Unix and the Linux system. So the good thing about, about this uh, Unix Linux uh, operating system, it's, it's, it's secure, it's very stable and uh, very efficient when you deal with a lot of like uh, tons of data and also they are very flexible so you can modify it uh, to, 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 to build a, a subsystem that is adaptive to your, uh, to your devices like the embedded uh, technology. And also it's, uh, it has a very huge community. It's very, it's very friendly to the program. When you run into issues, you can just uh, check the, the website, the Google, uh, how to fix something. And you probably will find a lot of answers there. So Unix and Linux is uh, actually very widely used in the academia and the industry. And uh, one thing we want to know learn this thing is that Actually, uh, the like the, the servers that we we use a lot is is usually based on the Unix Linux system. So here is a, a picture. Actually, the statistics I found in the top uh, top five hundred the uh, uh, org uh, website. So this website is actually like the 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 top five hundred uh, supercomputer in the world. And we found that okay, uh, all of those uh, supercomputers they run in in this uh, Linux. And the one thing about Hotfun Two is that Hotfun Two also uh, runs on CentOS, which is just a subversion of Linux. And uh, so one thing uh, we know about Unix Linux is very it's it, it's uh, is it it's very universal. And another thing is the need for computing is increasing. So basically here, I just listed the two figures of our, uh, of our current, uh, uh, like the sequencing, in, uh, the, the sequence cost of, of, of our gen genomics area. So actually we can see that the cost uh, when we sequence the human genome is decreasingly fast. Uh, this is just the most law and then it's decreasing faster to, uh, to, to around 1000 nowadays. So the data as a cost is decreasing, the data uh, is more and more easy to obtain. So the data accumulates uh, in a more like uh, exponential way. So actually here we can see that this is like the, uh, the cumulative number of human genomes. So we can actually see that it increased in this uh, log fold. So notice the y axis here is in the in in the like the exponential scale, so it increased rapidly, and a lot of the bioinformatics nowadays, um, we build tools in this uh, Unix in Linux environment, and we also process the data in this Unix Linux environment. So this is why we want to learn the uh, the, the Unix Linux things. And another thing that, uh, okay, it's not uh, something, uh, some trouble we are going to uh, go through because Unix Linux uh, is, is, is actually can free our hands and uh, our mind from some of the repeated, repetitive and the tedious work. So actually this is a very funny comics I found online that uh, some people are protest, uh, protesting that uh, we should uh, stop giving uh, jobs to the robots. The jobs should be uh, for humans. But later they found, okay, it's too tired to do those things by themselves. So they just hire some, some, some robots to do the protest for them. So actually this is a really, uh, I, I think a vivid illustration for why this, uh, these robots uh, can make our life easier. <laughs> Uh, I mean, why, why learning, uh, that learning those things can really uh, uh, do something that we don't want to do. And uh, so it's, it's, more, it's also really accurate that if we give an order to the machine, they can execute it uh, in a very precise way so that all the results, it's, it's like a, a more producible way because uh, we don't, uh, if, if, if we are going to do those tedious work ourselves, 
like doing some repetitive work, and we probably will run into some uh, mistakes or errors if uh, by, by the human hand. But if we go through the same same machine, you will need the re results is more reproducible. So um, this is about why we uh, learn the Ulex. And the uh, next thing is how are we going to make the robots, the machines, do whatever we want. So this is about the, how to give the orders to the machines. So the ideal uh, human computer interaction is trying to, trying to tell them, OK, I want something in a human language so that they can do uh, whatever, we, whatever we, we want. So it's just more like the, the Iron Man uh, movie, uh, the Jarvis. We, they can take care of our routine, daily routines uh, very easily. But, but now, um, actually at this time of stage, the computer is not that smart yet. So actually we need to do some uh, like programming, like give some command line through the terminal so we input some command, then the computer will output. So we must use uh, the, the another like the, another language, not human language, like the a language the computer can understand, to uh, to do this uh, uh, to do this kind of interactions. So this this language is called a uh, command line. So here, uh, after we go through what the what the what the like the reasons why we learn and uh, how are we going to give orders. So the major topic we are going to, going to teach today is about the command line, the language that the computer understands. So um, the, the, the command line, so when we want to input those uh, command line, uh, so actually we deal with the command line interface. This, this is very different from our daily use. So probably a lot of us are very familiar with the graphical user interface that you deal with every day. Like the Mac OS, when you open your computer, it has a lot of uh, graphics, like the figures, icons. And if you are Windows, you probably will uh, see some interface like this. So those are called the uh, GUI, graphic in user interface. But today we are going to learn a different thing like CLI, which is just a command line interface that it will have a screen, but it will just have this, uh, uh, this, this, uh, this cursor here and wait for your input. And if you enter it, uh, like execute it, it will list some of the, uh, the folders in this system. So it's more boring uh, compared to the compared to the graphical user interface, but also it sometimes is very efficient. So here it's like the comparison between CLI and the GUI. And uh, for the ease of use, of course, GUI should be much easier because it's more intuitive. You can use your mouse your, uh, to click whatever you want, and then you open a, a application and you go through some documents. But for the command line, you probably need to memorize some commands and uh, you probably will need some time to get familiar with it. And but for the other of the properties, like if you have a more control on your data, and if you will need uh, more resources, uh, like nest nest resources, and uh, faster speed, and uh, you can do some uh, self-edited uh, scraping, and uh, also a lot of uh, a lot of uh, other things that. Uh, that makes CLI more favorable. Like if you upgrade your system, you probably have a different interface in GUI, but always in the command line interface, you always have this original, uh, the uh, original command that remains the same. So this is about the uh, difference uh, about CLI and the GUI, which is not actually not very really important for you uh, to learn the command line, but this is just an overview for you to learn, okay, this is actually have an advantage. Although it's boring, um, it, seems to, it seems to be boring at the very first time, but after you get more familiar with it, you actually can experience like uh, a lot of uh, good advantage. And this is like the Hoffman 2 uh, cluster overview. So 
which is also part of our today's workshop. We want to access this Hoffman 2 and then in day two and day three uh, workshop, we are going to use it to do some computing work. And uh, so this is like a basic introduction for the Hoffman 2 cluster. We actually, so this is a campus on campus uh, network uh, computing cluster, and uh, you can use it to do whatever computing work you like. And uh, it, uh, it's, it's shared by our uh, Hill campus uh, community and has a lot of, uh, actually you can think there are a lot of uh, computers there and uh, we actually have one, more than 1,000 nodes and um, uh, more than 20,000 cores. And for the storage, we have 50 terabytes aggregated memory. Uh, yeah, this is just for memory. And for st storage, we have like 2.5 uh, petabyte, petabytes and, uh, storage and a two petabyte backup. And this is like, uh, like a, a, a figure to show uh, what is actually um, the, the, the Hoffman 2 cluster looks like. So basically uh, here, the yellow, yellow square here, the, uh, shows uh, our local computer, like your terminal, your computer. And uh, when we try to log in, uh, we actually, it's more like a job submission uh, procedure that we log into your login nodes of, of the Hoffman 2. And then the Hoffman 2 load, if you initiate a computing task, the login node can distribute, distribute the computing to different clusters. Like we have so many computing nodes and storage of things. So basically it can distribute the computing task to different clusters and then uh, your, your computing tasks can run in a parallel way. So this way uh, your, 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 your computing can uh, be accelerated if you run in the parallel. For example, if you have 10 tasks and uh, instead of waiting for maybe 10 hours to let it finish, you can just uh, separate them to 10 clusters and then they, they were just finishing one, one, one hour. So this is uh, uh, the Hoffman 2 uh, architecture. And actually it's uh, currently the largest uh, and the most powerful shared cluster in the UC system. And the next uh, we are going to uh, teach you how to log into Hoffman 2 from the command line interface. So um, yeah, before I dive into the lecture section, I noticed some questions in the chat box. Let me take a look. Okay, so uh, the first question is about uh, the link to register here, uh, which is uh, related to our previous uh, register account. Um, page, so it says, so the link to the register here uh, on the registration site for Hoffman 2 cluster is down. Uh, is there any other way to sign up? So actually here, you must have a, a Compass VPN to, to, to register this uh, access. So actually when I uh, tested it yesterday, I also found this issue and I emailed to the Hoffman 2 IT support and they told us that you must have a Compass VPN to uh, go to the GIM, so which is this page. And if you don't, if you found, okay, this, this page is not working, uh, simply just uh, connect to the VPN. So I can't seem to be able to access the VPN because I'm not associated with UCLA. I tried. Um, downloading the Cisco VPN, it says it's restricted. I don't have access to it. I see. Um, so one suggestion I can give you is to um, probably just uh, find uh, the Hoffman 2 cluster IT support and uh, explain the like the the, the non non UCLA affiliated person how how can they access this GIM. So this is one solution, and uh, I. I don't know, do, do, do you still have a Hoffman 2 account or you, are, you, are, you don't have an account for that? I don't have an account for this, so I need to sign up through here. Um, okay. I'll email, um, I guess, the UCLA IT Support Center and see what we can do. Right, right, yeah. Okay. 
Thank you. Yeah. So uh, this is about the question. And uh, so next uh, few slides is just trying to guide you guys to uh, access this to uh, this uh, Hoffman two cluster. And um, so if you don't don't have the Hoffman two account, uh, it's okay that our today's uh, workshop, like the following part about the command line, we don't really need a Hoffman two. So you can also do it on your local computer to to try to get a, get familiar with the. Uh, command line interface. And if you have a Hoffman 2 account, and the following slide is just trying to teach you how to log into that. So uh, if you are a Windows user, you can just, uh, uh, yeah, just uh, open the, the mobile X10, which I told, uh, told you guys at the very beginning. So you just uh, going to start the local terminal, uh, just uh, click, click, click this button here. And then you are going to have a have a like a interface like like this. So basically, it will uh, uh, just type in the your SSH and your user name at one2.idie.ucl.edu. So actually, it will require you to input the password. And then after you, uh, yeah, just just type in your uh, password here. So one, one thing to notice is that um, this uh, command line is case sensitive. So make sure the SSH or other things like the things is just like the, the, the uncapitalized or uh, uncapitalized one. So if you input a capital S and the uh, uncapital SH, you probably will run into some error because it's not recognized by the system. So you must, uh, notice or keep in mind that in Unix, everything is uh, case sensitive here, like the for, the for the command line. And also for the security reason, when you type into the password, it will not show anything on your screen. And this is just a, yeah, for security reason, you don't want anyone else like passing by your desktop and then see your password, right? So basically uh, just make sure you type in right uh, here it won't show anything, um, but it's there. It's there, so it's not like your your keyboard is disabled. It's disabled or something. It's just a, uh, it's not showing anything. And if you type in wrong or something, you can just press enter, and then it will tell you okay the password is not not valid. So you probably need to uh, improve your password again. So until until you succeed succeed. So basically, yeah, just to try this if you are a Windows user. And after you log in, um, it will, okay, uh, yeah, after you are trying to uh, finish typing your password, press enter, it will log into the system and will show some message here. So the first message is about a notice. It will say, okay, uh, please do not compute on, a, on the login note and then uh, blah, blah things. And uh, yeah, this, the first thing is that uh, everyone who are using the Hoffman 2 should keep in mind that we should not do our heavily computing work on the login nodes. So this is because uh, when we first see this, the, the login node here, um, actually everyone who are going to do the work, initiate the computing work is using the login nodes. So if you are using it for computing, it will prevent other users from accessing uh, Hoffman 2. So this is bad. This is like uh, something we don't want to uh, experience. So make sure uh, it's okay that uh, uh, you do some light work, like you go through the Unix system or something, but make sure you don't do a uh, heavy any computing work like the alignment scene in the login node. If you want to do that, like the do a heavy, heavy need, uh, have any computing work, we will teach you how to do that in uh, in the day three uh, workshop. But when you just log in, uh, just remember don't do uh, computing work in the login nodes. And the following is like a uh, Leo's. Uh, oh, yeah, we will, we will teach another 15 minutes so we can give a break. And uh, the following section is, uh, is a Leo's that um, 
the home country want us to know and uh, we don't yeah currently we don't really care about it so the last thing is about this uh this prompt this uh, this cursor thing so this is actually the the the, the interface we are going to type in the command so uh, this is about the uh, uh, Windows user. Another option is that you can also, uh, instead of start a local machine, you can also click the session here and then uh, click, uh, after that you, it will pop up a window and you can click SSH and also uh, input the, this, 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 uh, this part like the, Remote host is hopman2.idre.ucl.edu and specify user lane and then put your user lane here and then click OK. Probably it will also ask you to input the password. After you finish that, you are still going to the same, uh, same terminal. So, yeah, this is about the Windows user. We actually provide two options to let you access login to the Hopman2 Hopman cluster. And if you are a Mac OS or Linux user, uh, so things could be easier that you can just uh, open your terminal from your, uh, from your computer and then go uh, SSH uh, your user lane and at hopman2.idre.ucl.edu. So after that, uh, yeah, we were still going to the, uh, the hopman2, we have following uh, message the, the the notice the message the news and also the command line we are going to input so yeah so so one thing about this uh the, this this uh, command line we are going to input is about the unix show so actually this have some kind of uh, the format we are going to uh, introduce here uh, that the first one it's your user lane, uh, as you can see here. The here WBGO is my user lane. We we at uh, login one uh, tilde and dollar sign and the cursor. So basically, this means uh, user lane uh, for the first part, and for the second part, login one is just a server lane. It tells us okay, we are in the login node, uh, node node one. And the tilde is just the folder's name. Here, tilde means your home directory. We are going to talk about it later, but you can just think, okay, it's a folder name. And the, the cursor after the dollar sign is just the command we are going to type in. So we will teach you how to, uh, what kind of commands we, are, we, we have today. And the shell, uh, this shell actually is the interface you communicate with this, with the computing system. And also it will wait for your command and will execute it after you press the enter key. So uh, after finishing that, it will return the output or error message to the terminal, to the shell. So basically uh, if you put some command here and enter it, and then it will show some like the results or error message below. And so if no error message is, is displayed, the union means uh, the command was uh, executed successfully. So actually this is just like a no message, it's a good message. So uh, yeah, this, this is basically about the explanation of, of this uh, Unix show. So uh, I'm going to uh, pause here uh, so let you try this. So I'm going to, um, so, so I, I have given some time uh, for our students to try, to try those commands. So right now I'm going to uh, do it on my side and uh, then you can, uh, you can take a look uh, if you do it right or something. So, uh, so can everyone see the see the terminal uh, from my end? Like the can can you see the terminal scene? If you can give me a sum, okay, great. So here uh, the first thing uh, is trying to log into the Hopfan two 
cluster. So remember, we have learned that in the in the, in the slides that we use SSH, uh, which means a secure shell, but that's not important. Just remember three three letter SSH, and your user name. Uh, my user name is uh, WBGO and at four seven two dot IDRE the UCLA the EDU. So after that, uh, it will require you to uh, get a, uh, input the password. But uh, uh, yeah, because I just restored my uh, password on Hotline to you. So yeah, uh, do some, uh, so, so I just uh, get rid of the inputting things. Here, uh, we enter into this uh, logging three load. Um, and uh, the first thing we want to do is trying to echo hello world. Uh, just as we, uh, uh, we we required in the in the practice slides. So, oh, wait a second. Probably I shouldn't use the uh, explanation. Okay. okay, it will tell, okay, hello world. And then uh, the next thing is trying to, trying to, uh, run this command. So here, oh, let me see if I can copy and paste. Okay, I just uh, copy this command. And then uh, paste and it will, it will require Um, let me try it again. Yeah, that probably will have some issue with my configuration. Oh, uh, probably I will try, try this later. But right now, uh, I think we have teach for uh, uh, for, for 50, uh, 45 minutes. So we are going to give a break and uh, then we will uh, come back and uh, then the rest of things. So uh, we'll come back from the from the break. So uh, actually, uh, in the chat box, um, we came across a very good question about the difference between single code and the, the double code. So probably here, I can just try it again um, from the from the uh, terminal. So uh, previously I tried using the double quote and we found that it will return an error saying the uh, bash inventor not found. But if we use the single quote, oh, probably, yeah, just try that to be the consistent it will uh, output the exact same thing. So this is just because the single code will not interpret anything uh, in the string, like the, 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 uh, the symbol here, but in the, in the double code, it will uh, try to interpret, trying to find what does the, the symbol mean. So here, uh, this is just a slight difference. And you can also find the answer uh, just uh, trying to uh, Google search what's the difference between single quotes and a uh, single quote and double quotes uh, in, in Bash. So this is one thing I want to uh, mention about. And another thing is about uh, when I trying to copy and paste the gate clone code, I found that error uh, in previous uh, attempt. So uh, this is because when I copy and paste, here, it will just uh, the, 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 the minus here, it's not uh, exact, like uh, be copied and the paste type here. So you just need to uh, make sure uh, the code is exactly the same to the slides so that you can run it and then clone the GitHub uh, repository to your local, uh, to your local computer or the whole to folder. So I believe everyone can uh, finish this next 
uh, log into Hop and you and try this to um, uh, command successfully. Is that right? So um, next, um, yeah, thanks. So next, uh, we are going to talk about. Uh, so this is our first attempt. We print hello world using the the, the shell, the best shell, and uh, uh, so we can regard it as the. It's our first cry to this new world, to this new Unix world. So the next thing we want to uh, go deeper about the file system. Like when you first log into the Hopman 2, uh, where are you and uh, where are you going to? And how to uh, go from one directory to another, how to do some like the, some, some checking where, uh, like the, the, what's in this directory or something. So the first thing we want to talk about is the file system. So actually, uh, everything in the Unix system, you can think it's a file instead, like uh, whenever you are dealing with things, it's a file or a folder, like your devices, like your uh, screen, like your uh, uh, everything like in Unix should be treated as a file. So, and this file is organized in a, in a, in a hierarchical way that it has a root, uh, we call it uh, in this backslash is a root. And then uh, it shows like a tree structure, like the root can have different branches. And, uh, and then, then each branches can have another branch to the end, it, it called a leaf, so it's a file. So anything uh, in between is a folder. And then there are also some like the, uh, and, and besides the, uh, so, so the leaf is a, is a file, and then uh, the, the the folder is just the the uh, like a, a like a set to come con con consist these files, and then there are also some uh, dash dash lines linking from one folder to another. So these are called the symbolic links. Like we created a shortcut from uh, from, from from like in, in our our own computer. So this is just a you can think it's just like uh, it's a shortcut uh, to to this folder. So these are the uh, three different things in the file system, and uh, we can yeah this is just like uh, in in this tree structure we have the root uh, to the to the to the branches to the leaves, and we can also uh, treat uh, this uh, folder. We can give it another name that if we are in this folder we have this folder. So one level up, like the home folder, is a parent folder, and uh, for the home folder, the the one level down, the bottom is a child folder. So actually, this is a parent child, like a like a family tree thing. So yeah, this is just a. I, I just want to try to get you familiar with the terminology when we talk about the parent folder. We talk about the folder that one level up of our current. Uh, current directory or file. So uh, this is about the file system, and uh, and uh, so when we have a file system like from the from from the very root, uh, like in this in this tree structure, we can have the definition of the path. Like if we are going to denote where am I, we need a path. So you can refer to your file or directory using two different uh, paths. One is called the absolute path, and the second is the relative path. The absolute path is just the full path that begins from the root to the current directory. So we can take a look at the hello world uh, file. If we want to find the absolute path, we should uh, start from the root, which is a backslash here, and then go to the home folder uh, and then go to the E folder and then the hello, hello world. So you can see it's just a pass from the, from the very beginning, the root to our end, to our leaf. So this is just like uh, we can write in this way, the backslash, then home folder, E folder, and then hello world dot txt. So this is just an example of the absolute pass. And uh, if you think, if you assume you are in, another like a, a folder, like a home folder, you can also denote this file using a relative path. 
So with relative means you are relatively to your current location. So if you are in this home home folder, so your uh, relative path to hello world is just trying to like uh, the first is if, and then the hello world. So I guess uh, these two are very important um, in the in, in in our study of Unix command line, the path because this means uh this means uh where are you, and then what are you going to do? So if you don't uh like uh, you you forget the absolute password relative path, you probably will get lost in this file system. So the path is like a direction you are going. And uh, it's it's also a location of where, where of your status. So uh, I guess this is just a quite brief introduction about the absolute path and the relative path. And the next, we are going to learn um, uh, how to navigate through the file system. So remember, we 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 tell that we the path is very important and. Uh, if you don't, if you are uh, SSH logging into the often to you, you want to know where are you. So you probably use the PWD. I will teach you later about this direction, uh, about this command. So PWD is telling you, okay, where are you? And the CD uh, is telling you, uh, is a command that you want to change from one folder to another folder. You know, in, in, in our like, uh, GUI like application, when we want to go from one folder to another folder, we always like move up and then click another folder to enter into that folder and then enter into another folder sort of things. The change, direct, change directory, the CD command is uh, something like that, but we do it in the command line instead of using our, yeah, our mouse to click things. And the list here uh, is trying to show what's in this folder. So it can actually can have some uh, philosophy uh, uh, philosophy explanation here that uh, PWD is the, where are you from and CD is that where are you going and this is the, what what are you so you know the three different like philosophy question of of, of our like uh, of of a human being so actually I will uh, go deeper for each command here. Uh, the first one is the PWD, which means print uh, working directory. So which is just like the first letter of three words here. It will show the absolute path of your current directory. And the syntax is very simple. You just type PWD and it will give you the, the four paths from the root uh, to your current folder. For example, if we are logging to the uh, how fun to you, we notice the folder name is a tilde. This is your home folder. And you want to know what's the absolute path of your home folder. You can just uh, type in PWD, PWD and uh, then it will return the, the, the ex exact absolute path. So I encourage you to try at the same time when I was talking and you probably find uh, your, uh, you, you can find your own uh, uh, home, home directories, uh, absolute paths. And one thing you should remember that when, when you open a shell, you actually started in your home di directory, which is denoted as a tilde here. So this is a PWD. And uh, another thing is uh, the CD command, which means a change directory. We want to go from one directory to another and uh, the syntax is was uh, really simple. You just uh, input the directory path uh, um, uh, at, at, like, at the end of the CD with the space uh, in, in, in between. So for example, uh, after we do the, uh, after we do the uh, gate clone, uh, we clone this uh, directory to our own folder. Uh, we can just uh, CD change directory to this folder. So here, uh, the directory path can be absolute path or relative path. For example, here, uh, we are in this uh, home folder and then we actually here, we use the apps, a relative folder, a relative path to this folder. For example, uh, because this folder is uh, 
it's in the home folder so we don't need to input everything like the from the root to uh, to to w to wbgo to my home folder we don't need to input all those strings we just use a relative for a uh, pass here and then after that you, you can see the folder's name has been changed like we are actually this is our this one is our current folder and if you can put a, a pwd again it will tell you okay your current current pass is is this folder uh, so compared to the tilde, which is just uh, the, the the first server part, you actually uh, change your di directory to this folder. So I guess uh, this is uh, quite uh, quite uh, intuitive, quite simple. So you can try to uh, do it uh, on your own, and uh, just uh, trying to um, remember the past is very important. Uh, in our study, it actually shows uh, where are you and the web, uh, what are you going to do, sort of things. And if you don't still don't have access, uh, don't have this uh, QC bio intro to Unix folder, you can just uh, uh, copy this command to your terminal and clone it. And remember trying to, if you copy and find, okay, there is a missing, uh, a short minus missing, uh, you should um, fix it. And uh, another thing about the, the, the different notations of, for fold, uh, directories or folders. So here we talk about tilde is a home directory and uh, a dot is just uh, the current directory. For example, when we trying to input a CD and a space and a dot, it will, okay, it will change nothing because it's just uh, showing, okay, we want to be in the current directory. So it's still the QC by QC bio intro to Unix. And two dots is a parent folder of your current directory. So we have talked about the parent folder, which is just a one, one level up be, uh, of your current directory. So if you just trying to like uh, try this command and then you will find, okay, we actually return to the parent folder, which is the home folder. And we can use PWD to check which folder are we in? So we can see that before the command, we are in this uh, QC bio into to Unix folder. After that, we are one level up of two, of, of the uh, previous folder. So this is just an um, illustration for the parent folder. And uh, yeah, this is another practice, practice time. I will give you guys maybe uh, one minute, one, one and a half minute, so that you can try these things. So uh, I will try uh, on my side to finish the practice here. Uh, the first thing is trying to print the absolute path of your home directory. So uh, we are going to... Okay. Yeah, it's not related yet. So we notice the tilde here, which means our home directory. We can try pwd, uh, which will give you the absolute path to your home directory. And our second is trying to go to the QC bio intro to Unix folder. So which means we want to change the current directory from our home folder to your QC bio. So we can try change directory, which is CD, QC, bio, and uh, intro to Unix. So here I use a track, uh, a small trick that uh, I use, I, I can just type in the first several letters and then press the tab key. Like we, when we press the tab key, it will do the auto fill, like finish all the uh, folders name uh, directly. So, after that, we can just try to press enter. And then we notice that uh, the folder's name has been changed to, the, to this one. So we can also try to uh, review our current directory's absolute path, so which is uh, this one. And this means we successfully changed our location from our home folder to the 
current uh, QC bio Unix folder. And I got a, a question about uh, uh, about why it's like the QC bio Unix folder is on the Hoffman 2 account. This is not my um, computer. So the, uh, the answer to this question is that um, uh, when you try to uh, try to run the git clone code, uh, if if you if you run it on the Hoffman 2, it's on your Hoffman 2. If you run it on your local computer, then the folder is on your local computer. So just uh, trying to uh, uh, remember where did you run those code, uh, and then uh, for the how uh, how do you create folders? Uh, we will talk it about about it later. <laughs> yeah. So I believe we uh, solved this practice uh, correctly. And then uh, I just want you uh, always trying to remember the, the, the importance of a PWD, which is trying to tell you, okay, where are you? And if you uh, get lost in the file system, always trying to uh, know where, where is your location. And the second command, uh, the, 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 the third one is the list. So which means, um, trying to list the information of files or folders in a directory. So for example, if we use this list command, we can put uh, some of the flag and also the file name or uh, directory, directory names. So here it's just like um, what I show. Uh, we first cd into this QC bio uh, folder. We use ls and then it will list. Okay, there are four different things in this folder. And uh, okay, if we just list, for example, here we use a tilde, which means our home directory, it will tell you, okay, how many things in your home directory. Yeah, you can also input a, a path or, uh, or, 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 or a directory of name here. So, so yeah, probably you will run uh, run this thing and it will give you different results because you probably have a new account and there is nothing there. But uh, yeah, this is just an example of showing how to use the ls command. And for the flag, actually we have a lot of options. For example, uh, if we use uh, uh, this uh, dash l, uh, which means we want to show the show the results in the known list so we can get us these uh, results. So yeah, you can you can also try it on your end. If you are CD into this QC bio folder, ULS L, uh, you will end up with like a different list. For example, we have four folders. Uh, we we have four four items in this folder. So we can uh, view them in a long a long list of form that have different columns. So the first column uh, is the permission. So we are going to discuss it later, but uh, by here you just know it's a permission. And the second column is, uh, is just for type. And also um, uh, the, uh, the third column is the owner. Like I, I own this, uh, I own this uh, folder. The fourth column is a group and the fifth is a size. Six to uh, two eighths. Uh, it's a modified time. The lines is just the the name of the item. And we also have a dash a, uh, which means we want to list all files, all folders. So here it's just like uh, uh, what I tried on my end. That we can notice there is a dot dot git uh, folder which is not shown in previous in previous results. So this is because we use a dash, uh, dash A here. That means we want to list all the files or folders, uh, including those hidden, hidden files. So this is actually a hidden file because it started with a dot. And uh, that's the reason why it didn't show in our previous list command. But uh, here, if we put dash A, it will show, uh, it, it will show, show up. And um, so um, we also have other flag options like the dash S, capital S here. That means we want to sort, sort the file uh, by size from big to small. So here we actually have the folder uh, day one, day two, day four. 
they have for 4096, which is it's, it's not the actual size of those files, but it's just like the, the, the size for a folder because, uh, yeah, uh, so th those are not um, exact size for the what's in this folder. Uh, just remember that. And then uh, dash T here is just trying to sort by time. Um, so probably you will find nothing uh, because uh, all the files or folders should be should have the same time 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 step. So but if you like uh, uh, dealing with some uh, some of your own files, uh, they have different creation of time. You probably you probably find this command is uh, very useful. For example, you want to find which file is the most uh, recent edited one. You can use this uh, dash t here. And also we have a dash h, uh, which means we want to convert the size into a human readable, uh, human readable format. For example, we would, we don't want to want, want to have 40, 4, 4096. We want to know how many KB, how many gigabytes, how many uh, megabytes of the file is. So you can uh, put a dash h here. So as we can see that the, the folder, we have 4096, and then it will eventually will be just a 4K of the folder. And we also can have the dash, dash r, which, we, which means we want to reverse the order of our, uh, of our re uh, of our output. For example, we have seen that uh, we can we can order the the the, the output by size uh, because we use a capital S here, and uh, if we use a R here, we can notice the order is the reverse, right? For example, the last one is nineteen. Uh, here it's the first one. So this is also very useful when you're dealing with your files. For example, you want to find the the oldest file of your uh, of, of, of your folder, you can just uh, try to uh, find uh, use a reverse order and a T to to find the, the oldest or the smallest file or, or whatever you, you like. So this is just a, a tag a flag that you can reverse the output order. So um, there are also some tips when we trying to use the command. For example, we can use the up and down arrows to go back to the previous command and the yeah and, and the next command. We can use the tab key for auto, auto complete, completion. So we have uh, talk about this uh, previously, and we can use history to see how like the history of our commands. You have the list for that. And then we can also use clear to clean our screen. Uh, I have done, yeah, those are the like the most uh, useful or most uh, commonly used uh, uh, tips I, I, I have been uh, using for this years. It's very useful. And uh, here is another practice. Maybe this time I will give you three minutes to finish these four tasks. So I will show how to uh, do these things. And uh, first, let me try to get my terminal. All right. So uh, actually, we want to list the files in known form, store by size, sort here by size in human readable mode. So actually we can use the next command with uh, the following uh, flag, which is S -L, L capital S and H. So actually it will show as we desired. And uh, we want to go back to the uh, home directory. We actually have two options here. One is trying to use the tilde, which means our home directory. And we can also use a uh, parent, uh, parent folder because uh, the, this one is in the, in the home directory. So we can use tilde, uh, maybe here. Yeah, it will tell us, okay, we go back to the home directory. And we want to clean the screen. Uh, I have show, shown, shown that we can use a clear 
Uh, so everything uh, will be super clean here. And we can also try the up and the down arrow. Uh, 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 so here I just use the uh, up, so it will tell, uh, will, will, will show uh, the history command I used. For example, uh, this one is what we used before. And uh, we, we see the uh, change back to the uh, home directory clean the screen. So yeah, this is just uh, up and down arrow, uh, arrow key. And uh, for the uh, tab auto completion, so I'm not going to show here, but we have uh, seen this before. Maybe. Okay, uh, let's go back to the uh, failed permission. So we have uh, seen this uh, previously that I'm going to explain later. Uh, so the fail permission is actually a, a way the Unix Linux system trying to classify the users into three types, the user, like the owner of the file, like you uh, in your account, and the other users in the same group with you, and also uh, all users uh, in, the, in the whole system. So actually uh, each of them can have a three different permission read, write, and uh, execute. execute. And uh, this, in this way, because we, uh, gave, we, we can give different users uh, different permission on the same file, right? So here, it's just like the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the record of uh, which user can have mission, uh, have water permission on this file. For example, for the first three digit, uh, yeah, if we ignore the, the file type here, uh, for the first three, uh, it's the owner's permission, read, uh, write, and uh, execute. So here is just like the, the first uh, letter of the read, write, and, and uh, execute, which stands for X here. And uh, for the second one, it's a group uh, user, and uh, the rest uh, three is uh, others. So this is actually shows what the permission of the file. And uh, the, for the first one, the dash here means a file, a D means a directory. So this is just the file type. So I, I think um, probably let's, uh, let's look at this uh, more detailed one. Um, so for the file type, we actually can notice those things, the DL and the dash, which means directory name kind of file. And the user type, uh, OLA, which is you group, users in the same group and others, the rest, the rest of the people. And permission uh, can be R, W, X. And, uh, for it, uh, and also if, if there, there is R, you can encode as a four. And if it's W, it's encoded as a two. And X can be encoded as one. So here, for example, this, this line, uh, line letter uh, can actually be summarized into like four plus two plus one equals to seven. And uh, the second three uh, is like uh, four plus zero zero uh, equals four. And also R is four. So here actually means, okay, what the users uh, have the permission to read, but only the owner have the permission to write and execute the file. So I, I hope this uh, can give you a clear uh, illustration about the file permissions. And if we want to change the file permission, uh, it can be using the change mode uh, of a command to do that. For, exa for example, you want to change change mode, you can just uh, try, try to uh, like uh, we try different users uh, plus minus, which means you grant new permission or remove the previous permission and the different permission, uh, different file. For example, we can change mode, you, uh, uh, you means your uh, user, the owner, and uh, with, uh, with the execute permission to the readme file. So here it's just like what I tried. Uh, we can see that after we Execute this, executed this command, and we found that this uh, readme file has a file, has the executed permission uh, compared to the 
previous one. So this is just like before and after we run this code. So we can also try try another one, like change more the, the numbers we have talked about before. Uh, this can also uh, uh, can also change the permission uh, of the file. So probably right now you can uh, just uh, stick to this one, uh, trying to add that will remove. And then later you can just go back to our previous slides and digest uh, what that um, number mean and then use this command. And uh, so probably I will just give uh, one minute uh, to let you finish these two practice. Okay, maybe I can do it for you here. Uh, so uh, we first go into the QC bio. And the first one is trying to give a uh, readme uh, ex execu execution permission. So here uh, we were first uh, maybe just trying to list. Okay, right now we don't have execution permission for readme because this is a, it's a dash, it's another X. So we will change mode u plus x, which means we want to give the execution permission to the user. And uh, then we just uh, add readme. Uh, so after that, we can try trying to check. So we can see that compared to the previous one, we have an x here, like previous one is just a dash. So here we actually uh, change the permission and uh, you can also notice the uh, interesting uh, uh, signal is that the color is changed. So here the, uh, the, the green color usually means you have the execution permission. And next it's trying to convert day one to a private folder. And so we actually know that uh, now the group users can read the day one and the others can also read and execute the day one. So here we use another one like change mode 700, uh, zero, which means we don't want any uh, others to have any permission on this, on this folder. So let me say, should be this one. And uh, we can also check, we see that they don't have any permission on the day one folder. So in this way, uh, we successfully finished these two, uh, these two um, tasks. So um, next is trying to manipulate the, the, the files and directories. So here uh, is actually uh, the answer to our previous question, how to create a folder, how to um, uh, how to uh, delete a folder or something. So here we, we need to have several options here. Actually, this is uh, like the final part of our, uh, of our uh, uh, workshop today. So then we want to create delete files or folders. We want to uh, copy and move, uh, move the folder or files from one direction, uh, one, one location to another, or we'll create a copy. Uh, we want to know what's in this file uh, we want to modify them if, 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 if we can. And then we want to um, compress, if the file is too big, we want to compress it to a smaller one or decompress it. And we want to uh, download the file from our remote server or upload a file from our new computer, no, local computer to the remote server. So here uh, is the next the general syntax that we always, uh, use a command and with some flags to and uh, work on some uh, file or directories. So this can be like a, a, a two, uh, two, two spaces here, for example, a target directory to uh, uh, the, the, the source directory to a target directory, directory. For example, we want to move one file to another. We probably have two directories here. So here it's just like an example we have been through uh, previously, just the uh, command uh, flags and the uh, firewall directories. So uh, the first one is trying to create. So if we want to create a directory, we can use um, um, make directory. So which is just like five letter command. 
and uh, you can also uh, like uh, input your name or pass of the absolute path of the directory. And if you want to create a new file, an uh, empty, empty file, you can use a touch. So which is just like touch your file name. So here is what I uh, tried when I uh, preparing the slides uh, so that um, we actually can make my folder. And after that, I use this to check, okay, there is a new folder created. And uh, I use a touch to create a new empty file. And then after that, I use the LS to check, okay, there is a new file created. So this is a, a rather simple uh, to create things. Uh, one thing I want to mention that if you if the file and directory already exists, for example, the my folder is already exists and you rerun the my make uh, make directory my folder, they will uh, report an error that saying, okay, my folder already exists, so you cannot uh, run this one uh, successfully. But one thing is that uh, the touch can be run uh, without any error because this uh, touch, if, if the file exists, this touch will only change the, 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 the time of the file. For example, uh, it's just like the modified, modified time, update, the, update the, 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 the previous time to our current time. And so after we talk about the create, uh, the next thing is about to delete a file. So it happens a lot in our daily life, right? So when we, uh, for, some, for some reason, we don't want a file, we want to delete it. And uh, so it, it just make our uh, folders, directories clean. So for example, if we want to remove uh, a, a file or directory, uh, we still follow the same, uh, pattern that uh, we, we can put a flag and also the, the name or pass of our folders or files. For example, if we want to remove a folder, uh, we must put the dash R, uh, which means uh, recursively. So we want to delete this folder and everything in this folder. So the R is required when you remove a directory. And, uh, and uh, if we input a dash I means we want to interactively uh, remove something. For example, it will ask you, okay, are you really want to remove this thing? So um, if, if, if you want to, if, if your answer is yes, just simply put a Y, which is just the first letter of yes. And then if you don't really want to remove it, you can put an N, which stands for no. And uh, we can also use uh, uh, v and F, which means uh, we want to show the um, removing process will uh, for, uh, re remove uh, in a for forcible way, like without any asking. Just uh, completely uh, remove it from our dev devices. So uh, this is just uh, the thing I tried. Uh, for example, we want to remove my folder. I just uh, use a dash R uh, and then after that I use NIST to check if the file is, uh, is a, if the folder is complete, completely removed. And then if we just uh, remove a file, uh, we, we, don't, we don't need those uh, dash R. So after that, I still use the LS NIST to check the file is deleted. And also uh, I here is the example I tried to use the I uh, flag, that means that uh, it will ask you, okay, uh, are you try really trying to remove the directory? And if you answer it's Y, then the directory is gone. And if you answer it's no, so the my file uh, is still here. So it, it, it won't delete it. So it will ask you like in an interactive way. The so one thing I want you guys to be cautious about is that uh, the delete in Unix or Linux system is not um, reduable. So it's not like our desktop computer. We can always put something into the, to, into the trash bin, uh, recycle bin, and then we can get it back. But, but in the Unix, we don't have those things. So if something you delete, it's gone like uh and you don't have uh, any backup it's it's probably most most likely to 
to to like come permanently forever. So uh, usually, um, there is no no and do if there is no backup, uh, or no trash bag, uh, trash folder. And uh, if you are on Hopan two and accidentally delete something, um, because Hopan two have some backup for the project folder and the, your home directory, you can try to uh, ask uh, Hopan two to recover them for you. Um, but uh, I uh, I still think okay when you really try to delete something, you must be very cautious about that. You that you you should plan for that. Okay, if, if it's gone, it's totally it's uh, absolutely gone. And also trying to back up your important files in case you accidentally delete something. For example, the Google Drive have a has a, an limited capacity for the EDU users. For example, if you are a UCLA student and have the EDU uh, at the Gmail, then you can use the capacity uh, like a, for, for an, an limited capacity. So I always encourage the students to back up the important files to the Google Driver. And also another thing is that if you really don't want to delete something, you can also do with the File permission. So, because delete is more like uh, 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 the right, right, writing permission. So, what what you can do is trying to change the permission to make it uh, only readable. Not uh, and uh, in this in this way, the file won't be deleted. And uh, probably I will give you uh, uh, one minute or one one and a half a minute, so you can try these two tasks. And then after that, I will uh, show uh, show how to do it for you. So um, I will try to finish this talk for you. Uh, as we have uh, have been have, have learned that we can use the make directory uh, to create a folder. And uh, yeah, probably I can just uh, first list my folder and uh, after that we can see okay this file is this folder is uh, created and uh, we can use a touch to create a file and again it's there and remove them uh, we can use uh, dash i to remove a file uh, yes, and uh, we can use uh, recursive uh, this R to you to, to remove a folder. Yes, and after that the files are gone. So uh, yeah, this is rather simple. Um, and another thing is that I got a question, a good question for how to back up the files from Hopan two to Google Cloud. So actually, uh, there is a, a documentation for how fun to, from how fun to about data transfer. It it teaches you how to use different tools to uh, backup things uh, from computers to cloud or to your local uh, to your to, to your local computer. And uh, one thing is, uh, let me see. Yeah, Google. Yeah, Google Drive. So you probably can check those things, uh, how to uh, transfer data from uh, Hopan to, to Google Drive or Box. And the uh, one thing I use a lot is the Globus, so which is like a, a web page that you can decide which file to 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 be back up to the uh, to the Google Cloud, Google Cloud. So uh, I use this one a lot. So probably you can check it. So go back to our uh, uh, workshop. Uh, I think uh, probably uh, we can take a ten minute break here, and then and then we will uh, move back. So uh, maybe we can continue to learn the uh, the following command. Uh, for example, want to we want to copy copy a file or copy a folder. So this is just a syntax. We still use the flag 
and uh, two different uh, uh, two different uh, file file password directory, the source and the destination. So uh, the flag is still uh, quite similar to what we learned before. We if we are going to copy a directory a folder, then uh, we can use the R. Uh, flag R, and if we want to do it interactively, we can use I. So um, this is just like a, a example I tried that I want to copy the readme.md to be a, another another readme copy. So I just uh, copy this thing, uh, give it another link, so we can find okay this file, uh, it's uh, it's it existed. And actually, if you're trying to look at look into them, uh, which we will talk later, they are the, exactly the same file. So it's a copy. And if we want to copy a directory, we just simply input the R, the dash R uh, tag here. So here I just try uh, copy day one uh, with day one backup. So we can uh, create them, uh, uh, another copy of day one. And if we want to copy a file into a directory, so this is rather simple because we actually just want to put input um, this uh, copy this file into a directory. We actually just input a relative path to the destination. So here, for example, uh, before the day one, before we run this code, the day one backup only have tests, and then we copy this file into this folder. Then we have two files. So rather, yeah, it's it's rather simple. But just remember when you deal with the folder, you you always use the dash r, and then uh, everything will just like uh, uh, the syntax says. And if we want to move, um, so we talk about the create, delete, and the copy. Now we want to just move one thing uh, to another to another location. We can use this move command, move the source to destination. So this one have actually have a, a different uh, usage when we try to rename something. For example, we want to move uh, one file to another file, but it's in the same folder, but we give it another link. So it's actually what uh, accomplished what we call a renaming. Just we try, try to rename a folder or, or file. For example, here I just uh, trying to move the readme copy uh, file into a TMP, the template file. So after that, we found okay, uh, all other things are the same, and this file is renamed as this new link. Uh, it's, it's given with this new link. And if we want to move a file, uh, uh, yeah, also for the for the folder, we can uh, give it another link. If we want to move a file to your folder, we just uh, put, okay, this file, uh, move this file to the folder. So yeah, it's rather simple. And uh, after, yeah, before that, we only have two files. And after that, we have three files. So we actually move this, this file in, which is missing here, but just uh, put them into a, a folder. So this is just uh, uh, trying to move something from one location to another location. And uh, in the same in in the same um, in the same in the same uh, command, we can also use it to do some renaming. We probably sometimes we know uh, we want to give the folder a, a name of the time. For example, um, uh, just try to record what you have done with this folder and what this uh, file is about. Yeah, the move can can be used in this renaming process. And I use it a lot uh, when I'm doing my research. So uh, currently um, we have uh, these three practice tasks. So I will give you maybe two minutes uh, to finish that. And then I will uh, come back later. You can just refer to the example code in previous, in previous slides to finish the practice. So uh, maybe I can do it uh, on my site. So the first thing we want to do is copy uh, day one to day one backup. So this is rather simple. Uh, we just follow. And uh, we can see, okay, there is a new folder uh, 
created, which is a copy of day one. And uh, we want to copy readme to this uh, readme copy. And then, okay, we found a new copy of this readme and move it to day one backup. Day one backup. So, and I, we can actually say if day one backup. So this file is actually, it's now moved to the day one backup. And uh, we want to rename the readme copy as a, at this new link, so we can try the move command, uh, which is the one backup, a uh, readme copy to the one backup to tmp.md. So after this, we can check if the file is successfully uh, renamed. So yeah, this is about the tasks. I believe it's uh, uh, straightforward to work with. And uh, now uh, let's move on to how do you know the contents of the file? So here we actually have a, a command called cat, which means, uh, which, which is short for concatenate files and then print it on the standard output. For example, you can just uh, uh, input the file name uh, at the end of the cat. For example, here, uh, we cat day one test and it will output the, the contents in this test. And uh, so another thing, so this one is just uh, trying to get what in this, in this file and output it to the, to the terminal. Another thing is trying to modify the file. So we actually want to know how to how do we know how, how do we input a new, new new contents of the file, how to edit it, the, the original contents in the file. So actually there is um, uh, editor, uh, text editor uh, in this uh, Unix Linux system. We call it as VI, which stands for the visual editor. So there is also uh, another version called VIM, but here we, uh, it's, it's just an improved version of VI. So here we just talk about VI, but they are the, basically uh, a lot of things are, are, are really similar between these two. So VI here, uh, it's, it's just like um, trying to uh, edit the file in this uh, terminal uh, interface. For example, you can just input a VI uh, the file name here, I just uh, vi test. So after we press enter, it will enter into the file, the, 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 the inside of the files. So the, there is a hello world, uh, uh, hello world um, uh, uh, sentence here. And uh, once you are inside the file, you can see, okay, here it's just like the view mode. We want to edit the file. So we want to uh, press I, which stands for the insertion mode. And then uh, we can see there is an insert at the bottom of the file. And then after we finish all the editing, like we want to put a new words into it. We want to uh, delete some words. And after all that, we press the escape, uh, the K escape to jump out of the insertion mode to our view mode. And after that, uh, for example, we, we input the command line to call a new sentence in this file in the insertion mode. And uh, we press the ESC to jump out of the insertion mode. We can enter uh, a code, uh, 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 yeah, a, a, a semicolon and the and W, which stands for write. So we want to save the editing, the, the save, save the editing to our files. Well, we can just put a Q, which means quit. We, we don't want to save the uh, the, the modification or well, uh, WQ, which means we want to write and quit. So we save the, the editing and then we get out of the VI editor. And if we just use Q uh, with this uh, exclamation mark, 
we can force quit. That means we don't want to do anything, uh, editing, save any results. We just want to quit and uh, get out of the VI. So the modification will not be saved in this in this mode in, in this um, uh, in this option. So uh, this is about the the VI. So one thing about the VI so is that if the file exists, the VI can edit editing uh, can edit in the the file contents. And if the file is not exists, so it's uh, it can create a new file uh, with with the name you you given. And then uh, you will enter into that file. So actually, this one it's not like the touch command we use. Touch command can only create an empty file, but the vi command can let you uh, input what you want uh, in this file. So uh, probably uh, we will give you three minutes to finish this uh, practice, and. Uh, after that, I will uh, teach you how to do that. So uh, maybe I can show you uh, for the tasks. So we will first enter into day one. And there is a test. So we are going to edit the test file using vi command. So when we first uh, enter into this file, there is a hello world. Right, and uh, we want to insert a new line to the end of this hello world. So we press I. Uh, notice here, uh, the when we press I, there is insert means we are going to the insertion mode. And uh, at the end of this file, we can type in UCLA. Oh, uh, sorry, I cannot see it. Okay, not bad. You see a QC file, QCD workshop. So after we finish what the editing, we should press escape ESCK. So here the insertion in insert mode, after we press the escape, it will disappear, right? And then we put a, a semicolon and the WQ means we want to save the editing to the file and then quit VI, VI, VI uh, editor. So after we press enter, it will return to our terminal, right? So this uh, is the task one, and then we can use cat to for the task two. Uh, so this is, okay, hello world, you see LAQCB workshop, which is just a we what we edited. And the task three is trying to create a new file. Um, for example, we create a new file. So one thing we should we should notice that is that there is no, uh, only a test file. So we create a new file. Yeah, just with the name new underlying file. Then after we enter, we press enter, it will have a empty file. We enter into the insert mode, press less is more. After that is uh, escape and then input the WQ. Then we see there is a new file created and we can use cat to check the content, which is less is more, right? So yeah, this is uh, for the task three. And now uh, let's move on for the compress and decompress. Uh, so, and finally we will talk about download and upload. So for the compress and decompress, we use the gzip. So which will make your file uh, from a bigger one to a smaller one, like we compress it. So uh, the gzip uh, file is uh, actually uh, stands for GUN zip. So GUN is just like a utility of the Unix. And uh, the syntax is very simple. Uh, if you want to compress, you use gzip uh, file name. And if you want to decompress, you just uh, push, uh, put a, a, a hd here, uh, a dash d here, and then um, then yeah, it will uh, D here means the decompress. 
So this is just a uh, it's just like the uh, the, 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 the the example I tried. Uh, for example, I want to compress readme uh, to this GZ file. We use gzip on this file, so it will uh, transform convert the readme md to a uh, uh, readme md gz. And if we want to decompress it, so it will return uh, to the original format. And the one thing you can notice is that the color changed. Uh, the GZ file usually shows up like a, like a red color. So yeah, this is the uh, compress and decompress. And uh, so this is just a for file, but if we want to compress a folder, like we want to, uh, we want we want we want everything in this folder to be uh, compressed into one single file. We call we can use the tar, uh, which is just trying to archive uh, archive the whole total folder into uh, one. So uh, this is just a, simply stands for the tab archive created a compressed archive, and the syntax is also simple. Uh, we actually just have the tar and the some flags. And also the file, uh, file name and um, file, file that the, the new tagit ta file name and the original file folder's name, and also the decompress is just a change in the C, which stands for compress to X. So C um, create a new uh, archive X extract from the archive, and also V F uh, you can. You, you can choose V, which means we are both just listing the, uh, the, the processed uh, file, files. F, it means uh, the, yeah, it's just an archive file. So here, uh, yeah, here it's just like the, the options of this, this, this command. And this is just the, the, some of the examples I tried. For example, I want to, uh, with, with this TMP folder, uh, I want to uh, compress it into a, a target GZ file. So I just use use this command. Uh, we want to give it a new name, uh, TMP the dot tar dot GZ, and give this uh, uh, folder's name. So after that, we actually can find this one. Uh, this TMP can create a new file. And uh, if you want to uh, decompress this uh, folder, you can try this this command. So uh, I encourage you to try it after uh, next, uh, afterwards. So the last thing we want to talk about is uh, download and upload, uh, which we will use uh, SCP and also SFTP. So there are two, two different uh, command line we want to introduce. And we also want you to know there is also another option that we can use some tools uh, to help us to download the file from Hoffman 2 to our local computer or upload a file from local computer to the Hoffman 2. So SCP is just a secure uh, file copy uh, command. So the syntax is trying to, okay, uh, on your local computer's terminal, uh, if you are going to upload, uh, you can SCP the local file to your user lane. Oops. Uh, it, well, it will, uh, yeah, sorry, I misclicked that. Anyway, so it will, uh, if you put your uh, user lane, uh, how fun to do idre.edu, the, the edu. So this is basically. Uh, what we input in the SSH, but uh, you use the semicolon and also the the pass to that to to that uh, to, oh, the pass of the folder, so it will uh, upload the file to that pass uh, pass folder. And for the download, it's uh, similar that we uh, SCP the, the 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 remote server's file to uh, your current file, which we use a dot here to denote. So this will uh, download the file in this, in this path to the current folder. 
And uh, this is just for a very uh, small file transfer. If you have a really large data set, for example, thousands of data samples to, to download, uh, you probably can ch uh, check this link, uh, the Hoffman to data transfer option, which we have uh, seen previously that you can use Globus or some other tools to help you uh, finish this transfer. And uh, this is just a two example I showed. For example, uh, the, there is a readme file in my local computer. And uh, I use the uh, SAP readme and my uh, Hoffman 2. And we, I want to put it in the QC bio folder. And then after that, I can, uh, after that it will show, okay, the, the file is 100% uh, transferred, like uh, successfully transferred. And if, if for, the, for the download, I want to download the, the, the test file in day one folder of uh, on our Hoffman 2. So uh, I just uh, SCP that uh, to our current uh, directory. After that, I list, I found that there is a new file, test file. And if we want to know the content of a test file, we cat. And this is just like the file we, we modified. So there is also another tool called SF, SFTP. So if you are use this command, uh, you just uh, simply put, uh, change the SSH to SFTP. So it will need to uh, enter into this, in, in this uh, file transfer mode. And the uh, LS try, is trying to list the remote files. Uh, CD is trying to change the directory of uh, the remote server. And if you want to do the local files, local mode, you can just uh, simply put a L, which stands for local ahead of uh, LS and the CD. So these are two uh, things to change uh, the directory and list uh, files. And uh, to download and upload, you can simply use the get and the put. So put will uh, try to put your local files to the remote server. Download the get will, uh, get the file from remote server to your local computer. And uh, so if you finish all those things, you can simply uh, put a buy uh, to terminate this, this mode. So uh, I'm not going to uh, give you a task for practice, practicing this. Uh, I encourage you to try on your end for how to use the SFTP just using get and put and also uh, CD and LS, yeah, just uh, trying to get some uh, hands-on uh, familiar, uh, uh, familiar with uh, with with those with those command. So instead of the command lines, we can also have the tools to do the download and upload of us. For example, if you are using mobile X10, you can you probably will find there is a F S SFTP on the left left hand side. And then after you click that, you can see a uh, download uh, icon and the upload icon for there. So basically you can just uh, use your local computer uh, and click those things to download and upload the files from, uh, from the Hopfan2, uh, yeah, download files from Hopfan2 or upload the files to that. And also there are also other tools. I'm not going to go into detail, but they are really similar. Uh, you can always find the download and upload there. And uh, if you are a Mac OS user, there is a tool called CyberDuck and uh, you can just uh, open it. Uh, and there is an icon called Open Collection. And uh, after that, you just input the Hoffman 2 and uh, your username and your password and uh, select SFTP. Uh, then you will Click to the Hoffman 2 and uh, you can also uh, click, okay, I want to download or upload some file to this server. So uh, because we, I, I think um, probably you can try to uh, practice these two things. Um, after we, uh, we finish the workshop, uh, it's rather sim uh, simple. Um, one thing is, uh, uh, the last thing I want to uh, mention is that how to close the collection to Hoffman 2. 
So actually you just input an exit to your terminal. Uh, if it's connected to the Hoffman tube, then it will close the connection. So this is uh, the way you can jump back from the, from the remote server to your local computer. And uh, one thing um, is that we have gone through so many commands uh, in, in, in so many ways, like create files, modify files. If you don't, don't, and don't remember those things, it's totally okay. You can just uh, go back and check the slides, check the examples and try uh, from them. And also there is another option that we can use the Unix uh, to help us. So actually the Unix designers, they recognize, okay, so many things to memorize. Uh, we are not so like, so it, it's not so, so, so easy for us to memorize those, those things. So they can provide some kind of help. Like they listed how many uh, options there and how to use the command. For example, if you use ls dash dash help, it will list all those things. And you can find, you, you can read through them and uh, find the options you want to use. And also there is another thing called man. So which means uh, if you want to, uh, we, we, which stands for the menu. If we want to know the usage of LS, you can just simply use man uh, LS. So this is just like the interface uh, of the man menu. So it also have the, uh, the, the, the format of this uh, command and also the description of this command, what, how many uh, options are there and uh, which options to use. So you simply just use up, down, er arrow to screw line by line. And then uh, if you finish, you can press Q to exit this, uh, this menu. And uh, so I also want to mention that maybe you can run into different arrows uh, when you try this command. Uh, so there, is, there are a lot of ways to get help. So the first several things is like the Google. You can always Google. Uh, if you run into some error, uh, uh, if you run, run into some errors, you can try to Google, okay, um, uh, try to copy and paste the error message and then uh, put a Unix or Linux and then search it. There are tons of solutions there. And uh, there are also two uh, famous um, uh, form forum that we can use next stake overflow or Unix stake exchange. So basically this have a lot of solutions about the uh, usage of Linux. And also if you want to go into about, uh, about learning the Unix uh, by yourself, there are a lot of nice tutorials. Here I just uh, copy one, the tutor tutorial spot, uh, tutorial spot point. And uh, it will list uh, what the, uh, uh, it has a lot of sections and each section may be uh, one or two commands usage. And uh, yeah, you can, yeah, we're also very welcome to check it out. So um, I guess that's, uh, we probably, yeah, we are almost on time. And uh, here uh, is like the Google doc. Okay, and there are a lot of, I, I don't see any questions here, but there are some in the chat box. Let me check. Questions being added to the Google Doc. Okay, uh, let me see the Google Doc. Okay, there is one question that, um, okay, yeah, maybe we can go over the first question. Um, I think uh, probably for the first one, I think you can just um, try to exit or close the terminal and enter into it again. So it probably will solve this, this problem because this seems to be like the terminal is not responding to you. So probably you just close it and open it again. 
And the second one uh, is uh, when you when would you use tar versus gzip? So the gzip is usually for the file compression, and tar is usually for the folder. Like you have a folder, and the folder has a lot of files. So it probably at that time you should use tar. And gz is just for I usually we I I I usually use it for a single file compression. Yeah, so this dash dash, I guess it's probably something related to the symbol, the dash dash help here. Uh, let me see. Um, Yeah, probably it's just like the uh, problem of your uh, these symbols. So because I I can get it running successfully, just double check that. Okay, I think we go over what the questions. There is one more. Okay, yeah, I think yeah we have solved all the all the questions and. Uh, so I guess you guys can just uh, check the slides and uh, try to follow the examples in the slides and uh, just try to practice. So when you get more familiar with it, you probably feel, okay, Unix is not so boring. It's actually is fun and uh, also really easy to use. And, and uh, so one more thing I want to mention is about uh, the uh, to to those uh, to those students who take the workshop for class for credits, so actually at the end of the uh, workshop uh, next uh, um, after Thursday, there is a, a quiz which will be announced at the end of the weekend, and there is also a homework assignment. Uh, so, so you are required to finish those things if you take the workshop for credit, and if you don't take it for credit, you can. Yeah, I, I also encourage you guys to try it, just to try to know how well you master the, the skills. And also it's also a good way to review what you learned and try to apply it to solving a real problem. So the quiz and the assignment won't be very hard. It's simply just like the, the examples uh, we did in, in the workshop. And it's just like a combination of different tasks so it won't be very easy. Uh, it, it won't be very be very be, be very hard. It will be easy, and uh, don't don't feel feel worry about the the, the difficulty. It shouldn't. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not here to make your life harder, right? So I just want to uh, teach you guys have some fun with the Unix, and uh, yeah. I think let's uh basically for what today. Uh, still, I encourage you guys to try. Uh, and uh, review uh, the slides and uh, try it by yourself. So I think that's all. Uh, the Zoom link will still be the same for Wednesday and the Thursday. So I, I will see you guys uh, by then.